Hi, everybody. We're wrapping up confidence intervals for means today. We're going to do one that's a little bit different, but in a lot of ways, very much similar to what we did at first. I'm Mr. Hayes. This is Hayes' World of Math. I am going through the Stats Medic curriculum. If you want a copy of the notes that I use, there's a link down below in the description there, as well as links to everything else that I use. And while you're down there, feel free to drop a comment, a like, subscribe. You know the deal. All right, so the setup here is this. What we ended up doing was um, we would give you two, one or two different ways of memorizing words. So strategy A was you're going to just reread the path, reread the list of words over and over and over again. And then the second way was going to be you was revealed that you're going to tell a story, you make up a story between all the words in your head. And you were three minutes for each list, and then you'd write down as many words as you remembered on a sheet of paper, and we count those all up. And then we would try to go see which memorization strategy was the better. Now, as you can see here, I don't have the data here because obviously this is what you'd go through and do. Um, so like, for example, maybe you had 14 words on strategy A, and then maybe I had, I don't know, like 20 words here. So then I was just to subtract this, E minus B, I would come up with negative six, okay? All the data here is collected. We ended up having 16 students do this last year when I did it. And that is the dot plot from the differences that we ended up getting. Okay, and as you can see, it's, it looks relatively nice. A lot of data down here in the negatives, which would imply that, since this is A minus B, that B, the storytelling, was working better. But we still had some people who actually just straight memorization, rereading it over and over and over again was helpful. Okay, so this was again the difference in memorized words. <clears throat> so what does the dot plot suggest about memory training? For 11 of the 16 students, they remembered more with strategy B, the story one. And then we just went through here and went um, played around with it. So my mean was a negative 2.267 and my standard deviation is 2.764. So the interesting thing here that stands out is that the standard deviation is bigger than the gap to zero. So it may not, you know, if here it is, I might be going into here. So we, depending upon how the confidence interval shakes out, it may or may not show that there's a difference. But in terms of the interpretation here, on average, right here, a student remembers 2.267 more words using strategy B. And let's put a little context into it, the story strategy. OK? So again, data collection, dot plot. And again, we're doing the differences here. So yesterday, we ended up finding the averages and then taking the difference of those. Here, since we're talking about one person doing both strategies, we're finding the mean of all the differences. All right? So. When we have all that option, we got to go through and do something and with it, right? Let's build a 95% confidence interval. Why not? So here we go. First of all, parameter. We're going to call it mu diff, and that is the true mean of the difference in words remembered. My statistic, I forgot to write down. My apologies. A negative 2.267. And then the confidence level is 95%. Again, nothing really different with the exception of using the fact that we're doing differences here. For the plan, we're going to call this the one sample t-test for the difference in means. So again, we're back to the one sample. Why is it one sample? Because we're doing, even though we're doing two different things, we're finding the difference between each for each person. So we're doing we're getting one sample from each person because they're giving us the difference between the two. Conditions. Order of treatment is randomized, okay? So sometimes people will get strategy A first, sometimes people will get strategy B first, pass them all out, away we go. The 10% condition is not needed because we're not doing a random sample, we're doing an experiment here, okay? So since the treatment was randomized, we're good there. And then for normal or large counts, the dot plot from back here shows no great skew or no significant strong skews or outliers. In fact, it actually looks nice and curved. So apparently having less than 16, not a problem for my class last year. Now, so if the conditions are met, we're going to perform the calculations. So conditions are met, bing, bang, boom. And again, remember, so we can extend it to the population. This is so we don't have to worry about replacement, not that we need it. And then, and then for normal and large counts, allows us to say what? Allows us to say that we are using a normal distribution, OK? 
So since all those, calc all those things are met, Jenner formula, same as what we've been doing for the last three lessons, point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. All right. The specific formula is the mean of the differences plus or minus t star times the standard deviation of the differences divided by square root of n. Again, notice, not anything really significant here. The only really th real thing from this and what we did in the first time going through confidence intervals for means is the fact that I have the word differences down here. So it's very clear that we're doing the differences between what's going on. My work is here. Um, I have a um, degree of freedom of 15. So that gives me a t-score of 2.131. So I've got my mean. I've got my t-score here, excuse me. And then over here, I've got the 2.6 or 2764 divided by square root of 16. And so that gives me a margin of error of 1.473. So I'm going to take my mean and add and subtract that, which gives me a confidence interval of anywhere from negative 3, just around 3.7, negative 3.7 up to about negative 0.8. Okay. Now, the coup de gras conclude what's going on. So we are 95% confident that the interval from a negative 3.740 to negative 7.94 words. Again, remember context here. Okay, that's important. Capture the true mean difference in words remembered. And again, notice here we're talking about what do we do? I took the rereading minus the story methods. Okay, because again, direction is going to matter. So in terms of do we have convincing evidence that there's more than there is more words remembered using the story instead of rereading? The answer is yes. Why? Because again, all plausible values, which is here, plausible values is from negative 3.740 to negative 0 0.794. Um, wow, that didn't even come out. Sorry. In the interval of negative. And since it doesn't cross zero, they're on the same side. That means that whichever number whichever method is going to be the negative one, which in this case here would be the story method, would mean that that has, that's, has significant evidence for that one. Okay? So with that, we are done with the experience for the mean of differences. We're going to formalize this. Again, it's going to look very, very similar to what's going on, so we'll talk about a few things there. And then we'll move on to tests. I, not those types of tests. I'm talking about significance tests. So anyway... We will see you in a little bit. Bye.